Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to the Southern Spirits Podcast, where I regale my husband with Southern stories of the macabre, creepy, and strange. And I drink. And what are we drinking today? Well, our beer for the week will be Tiny Bomb American Pilsner. It's from the Wiseacre Brewing Company in Memphis, Tennessee. 4.5% alcohol by volume. Let's read the can. Brewed by the good folks at Wiseacre Brewing Company in Memphis, Tennessee. That's that's all it says. It's a really pretty can, though. It's very cute. Check out the pictures on our Instagram, Southern mm-hmm. Spirits Podcast. Check it out. There'll also be on Facebook and Twitter, all that stuff too, and our blog. But uh, about this beer, it is light. It's kind of like drinking just carbonated water. There's not much taste to it at all. But with that being said, it's still very refreshing. It's really nice. Uh, you could sit outside, grill some burgers, steaks, whatever, drink these all day. And probably not feel it because of that low alcohol content. And you won't even taste it either, unless they get really warm. I had one get really warm at the bottom of the can, and that wasn't good. Don't do that. Anyway, it gets a 7 out of 10 overall. Uh, I like it. Don't love it. I'll get some more of it eventually. But right now, we're just going to go through with these other things. Our liquor for the week, our shot in the dark, is Jeans Spice Flavored Rum. It's from the John Emerald Distilling Company in Opelika, Alabama. 40% alcohol by volume. Let's read the bottle. Spice flavored rum made with Alabama sugar cane syrup, pecans, and spices. And just so you know, you will taste every bit of that. The this pecan is, especially. Right. It's really sweet, and it's actually really nutty, too. The pecans really come through strongly. That being said, not a huge rum fan. I do like rum. This is really good rum, this in my opinion. This is delicious rum. It's very sweet, so be aware of that. And we the only, bottle is so cute. It's very cute. But all the John Emerald stuff is. It looks so classy, and it's got the little wooden stopper, and mm-hmm. it's got this cute little etching of a bunny <laughs> rabbit on the front. I honestly picked it up because the bottle was cute. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to be doing all of the John Emerald stuff eventually. I have a very good friend from Opelika. He... Let me try the John Emerald whiskey uh, about a year or two ago, and it was fantastic. They also have vodka and gin, so we'll be getting to those. But right now we're focusing on the rum. Um, I don't have an on ice or neat review for this because I've literally never heard of anyone drinking rum by itself, just straight. Unless you're a pirate. Well, I mean, I'm not a pirate, (laughs) so I didn't do that. But all that we did was mix it with cola. Let's just say Coke. But it was Sam's choice. It's Sam's choice, Coke, because we're poor. <laughs> and uh, I give that an 8 out of 10. So with that being said, the only score it got, it's getting an 8 out of 10 overall. It's good. Again, not great. Not my favorite thing, but it's a really good rum. So there you go. Pick up some John Emerald. Uh, excuse me. There it is coming back. Sorry about that. And enjoy it. Now let's move on. Leah, do you have any funny place names for us this week? I sure do. Um, This one is coming from Monroe County, Alabama. It is Scratch Ankle. Okay. Come on. (laughs) There is a town in Alabama, Monroe County to be exact. It's called Scratch Ankle. (laughs) Um, Scratch Ankle got its name because apparently um, there was like an infestation of like mosquitoes and um, just biting bugs. Biting bugs. There's a lot of stuff out here that'll bite you. Um, I was in a band called Biting Bugs. <laughs> Were you really? No. Ah, well. Um, <laughs> but it got all over their livestock and all of the people. And uh, just just real swampy land, I guess. Lots of mosquitoes. And uh, the residents were always just scratching their ankles. So that's what they decided to call their town. So the town is just named after the mosquitoes? I mean, but what if someone like got a mosquito bite on their butt and it was like scratch ass or like or, scratch or, balls? Or what if they got malaria? It's mosquitoes. <laughs> okay, well that took a turn for the dark. It was already dark. You're the right. town's called Scratch Angle. <laughs> How many people live in Scratch Ankle? I cannot tell you that because I have no idea. I've, I've You're so been. unprepared. I'm sorry. Get some figures. I, I'm, I apologize. That's okay. I'm sure the people of Scratch Ankle don't really mind <laughs> if people know they live there or not. I think they might be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, I'm from a town called Scratch Ankle. <laughs> Can you I'm, say that? What was that? What? It was Scratch I'm from Huntsville. It's Scratch I'm, I'm Ankle. Sorry, guys. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it's all... 
that's that's just too much. You just mm. pick the biggest metropolitan area near you, and you're just like, you know. I agree. Exactly. I was when I was young. I was from a little town called Holt Hole, Alabama. It's actually right outside of Montgomery. It's like a little subdivision. I guess it's not a subdivision, but you know, it's a small town. And I just told everybody I was from Montgomery. Yeah. Because when, I, when I was living in New that's York, that's how it is. Uh, people were like, well, well, where are you from? Where's your university? And nobody freaking knew at all. So it was either I'm from Huntsville or I'll go to school in Birmingham because yeah. that's the only two places that people know in New York. Yeah, I understand that. All righty. Well, you make good sense. Let's get into a story. How about that? All right. Well, we've got two stories today, like always, but one of wow. them is going to be real short because the other one is like my favorite story, like, ever i have a problem it just i love this story so That's concerning. we're gonna go with the short story first so we can mm-hmm. really let go on the long story okay all right so well, we're gonna short story start it off 30 seconds we're gonna start it off with a short one and it's gonna immediately go into a shot in the dark oh well because in may let me load of, it up. in may of 1892 something freaking weird Rain from the sky in Colburg, Alabama. <laughs> did you hear the court come out? I did. <laughs> what was it that rained on Colburg, Alabama in May of 1892? Was it A, eels, B, eels. blood, C, earthworms? Okay, where is Colburg, Alabama? I could not tell you. I'm sorry. I did not look that up. You are so unprepared. Every <gasps> week. Every week. Who does all the daggum research on this podcast? Who drinks all the alcohol on this podcast? Okay. <laughs> you do. Congratulations. Right. Um, You're about to drink more of it if you can't figure out what rain from the sky. I will. It would help if I knew where Colberg was because then would I could like decipher if there were eels. You? Would you no, like me to Google it no, for that's you? Not, that's cheating. We discussed that last week. All right. That's cheating. So, um, since it's the craziest one, I'll say eels. God. Woo! See, if you say eels, you should have another crazy one. But that, I thought blood was. But, I mean, all of those things actually have rain from the sky in locations around the southeast. So, um, we'll get to those later. I can't Um, wait for Leah to take a shot of this rum. Oh, it's going to be awful. This is going to be fun. Okay. Do you have something to uh, wash it down with? Uh, This water and this angry orchard right here. So, as you can see, Leah cheats on the alcohols. Shut up. I'm a big cider fan. Angry Orchard is not from the South. We need to get some of that cider, boys, so I can actually drink something from around here. Uh Uh-huh. There you go. Okay, take that shot. One, two. mm, I don't know about this. Start the countdown again. (laughs) I'm pumping myself up for this. Oh, you're going to make it. Two, three. Ooh, that's going to be bad. Yeah, wash it down. You know what we need to keep on hand? It's What's pickle that? juice. Pickle oh, juice is pickle a great uh, shooter companion. Not for rum. It's Probably not for rum, thing. but the whole point is that it gets Whiskey, rid of the taste. You know. Yeah. That wasn't bad. It was actually really, it's got a very refreshing pecan aftertaste. There we go. That I'm very much a fan of. Okay, well. Hold on. When you take the next <clears throat> one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you take the next one? Just remember that you said it was nice. You shut up because okay. the next question is a lot better. All right. All right. We'll so we're talking about, about we're talking about the day that it rained eels in Colberg, Alabama. Now, Yay, it's my favorite. Okay. Since you're not into like weird, strange stuff like I am, mm-hmm. you probably have no idea. Oh. <laughs> 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 that comes back. Yeah, it does. Hey, girl, hey. That's the pecans. Yeah, it is. Probably the cane sugar, actually. The cane sugar syrup. I think it's the booze, but whatever. No, I don't think it's Um, So there's this guy who's really famous in, like, weird circles, all right? Um, so I weird no being... no idea what that means. So, like, people that like aliens and monsters and cryptids and people like me. Weirdos. Okay. Um, his name is Charles Fort. Charles Fort. Charles Hoy Fort, which I think is the best middle name Hoy ever. Fort. Hoy Fort. Um, Say that five times fast. Charles Hoy Fort. Charles Hoy Fort. Not the okay. first name, just Hoy Fort. Hoy Fort. <laughs> I can't even say it once. All right. Anyway, um, but this guy is uh, just this prolific researcher and writer, um, and he specializes in anomalous phenomena, which is the best name. Um, mm. So it just means weird stuff. He anomalous researched anything. Phenomena. Yeah. Okay. Anything that was weird or strange or different, he totally, like, researched it and wrote about it. So, 
he is sort of the guy that collects all those weird stories, put it together, did research about it. And he was also a, a, basically a, a skeptic, too. So he wrote it from a perspective of what scientifically is causing this. Now, um, people... Okay. I like that. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I like cool. skepticism. Um, people that follow him and are really interested in his work and the stuff that he was interested in... Um, are you know called Fortian? So anything, any of the weird subjects Fortian. like Fortian, because his name was Charles Fort. Um, so Fortian and like Fortiana. So like if you say I'm really into Fortiana, it's like I like the weird stuff. I like ghosts. I like um, aliens. I like uh, just all of the different weird stuff. So, so it's Americana, <laughs> but only what Charles Hoyfoyt is no. about. No. Okay. Anyway. Well, I apologize. Uh, anyway, but he... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't think you understand. I don't. That was why I asked. But anyway, this anyway, is the quick story. I'm sorry. Go. This is supposed to be the short one. <laughs> I'm feeling that, Rom. <laughs> Woo! Ooh, anyway, but he wrote a book um, that collected a lot of his... I mean, he wrote a bunch of books, but the book that we're specifically focusing on is called The Book of the Damned. Um, nice. Nice. And in this book, he details a lot of different things. Um, but this particular story is about uh, the day it rained eels on Colburg, Alabama. So in May of 1892, uh, the New York Sun, uh, which is a newspaper, I assume, uh, mm -hmm. reported uh, the following stage of it. Um, so there was a storm in the tiny community of Colburg, Alabama, which I do not know where it's located. I'm sorry. Of course. Um, <laughs> and of it course. was raining eels. Um, and it's not just any type of eels. It's just an eel that was not indigenous to any of the waters around Alabama. So, you know, our only, our only water source is the Gulf of Mexico. So it was not an eel found in the Gulf of Mexico. Depending on how close it is, were they freshwater eels? It could be in the uh, Mississippi River. It just says an eel that is unknown in Alabama. I don't know anything about eels, but I'm assuming it's just some wackadoodle eel that nobody had ever seen Welcome before. Welcome to the best researched <laughs> podcast you've ever listened to. You shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do anything, so be quiet. Hey, I do everything. Mm -hmm. All right. So Charles Fort wrote that there were piles and piles of eels in the street. People were a little freaked out because, like, dude, there's eels literally raining from the sky. Um, but then, being, like, the sort of frugal people that they are in Alabama, um, the farmers came along with their carts and their wheelbarrows, and they started taking them away for fertilizer because, I mean, free eels, right? The eel, they were all dead, I'm guessing. Yeah. Because they need water. To, are eels fish? Eels are fish. Okay. Yeah. I They're wasn't vertebrate sure. fish. I really wasn't. Again, yeah. welcome to the best research <laughs> podcast you've ever listened we to. We are SMRT smart. Ooh. Yeah, no. <laughs> I literally just said our eels fish. I think we may need to take this whole episode again. 14 minutes in. Yeah, so they are fish, um, and they were dead. <laughs> All right. Come on. Um, I'm sorry. So... The eels were, like I said, just in piles, and they, the farmers were just like, look, free fertilizer. So they just loaded up in carts and took them to their farms to use as fertilizer. Um, and in the forty in, or the Fort book, it says the eel deluge may have resulted from a water spout lifting and jettisoning. That's a hard word to say. Jettisoning. Jettisoning the fishes. Which, I, I like the word fishes. Anyway. That just means there's multiple uh, species. I assume. Um, yeah. No, that is what it is. Oh, cool. That's what everybody would always tell you, you know, fishes is wrong. No, if it's multiple species of fishes, then you say fishes. <laughs> if it's a, a school of one species of fish, it's fish. So there you go. Welcome to the best researched podcast you've ever listened to. Oh, bless your Thank heart. Thank you. Bless your heart. Anyway. I have redeemed um, myself. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, sweetie, no. Um, but, so, I mean, that's about it. Basically, eels rain down. They think it was a water spout. They have no idea where the eels actually came from because, once again, they were not indigenous to the native waters around Colburg, Alabama, which, once again, I have no idea where it is. All right. <laughs> 
Um, but there's also a lot of other fish rain that has happened in and around <laughs> the southeast. I just so love let me tell you about rain. some more f- fish rain. That makes me so um, happy. So in Marksville, Louisiana, in 1947, it was October the 23rd. Um, the skies were a little foggy, but it wasn't storming. It wasn't like in Colberg where it was a storm and clearly things just like eels. Um. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's just like eels. eels. Yeah. Okay. Um. So it wasn't like I've been there. Like that. It was just like there. It was foggy. It was a little cloudy. Um. But there weren't any storms, and all of a sudden, these fish just start freaking falling from the sky. They had largemouth bass, sunfish, something called a goggle eye. I've never heard of that fish, but apparently it's a fish. I don't know. Um, what a goggle and a hickory eye is. shad. Uh, but at any rate, uh, <laughs> there was a lot of fish falling in Marksville, Louisiana. Um, and then uh, another one that was really famous from Alabama, in 1956, um, it happened in Chilachi, Alabama. I think that's how Excuse you say me. that. That's a that's one I've also Chilachi? never heard of. Chilachi. Okay. Um, a woman and her husband, um, I think they were farmers, um, but they were watching on their front porch being farmers, I guess. I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> is that is that what you think farmers do, Leah? I, I don't do you think know. they stand on their front porch and watch things? Well, I mean, they were sitting on their front porch, <laughs> sipping a mint julep, watching the storm roll in. You know, like you do. We do like that a, all the time. Like Shut us up. Southerners do. <laughs> like we do. Round here. Mm-hmm. Um, but they mint juleps. they watched as a small dark cloud was forming in the sky. It was a small dark cloud. It wasn't a storm. It wasn't a hurricane, tornado. Sounds like a no. eel cloud to me. Small dark cloud. Um, and when it was over, cla- oh, bleh, when it was overhead, the mm-hmm. cloud released its contents. So it started raining catfish and bass and bream, and all the fish were still alive. So these mm-hmm. were obviously freshwater fish. So yeah. some kind of weird something happened, and the fish got in the sky, it's and it just spell. completely rained down. And they said that the rain lasted about fifteen minutes, and then the cloud turned back white, and then it went away. And they had all of these fish on the ground. What they did with the fish, I don't know. I think they used them for fertilizer. Maybe, because they were farmers. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that's a thing. Well, no, they used them to spice up their mint juleps <laughs> while they oh, sat on the porch. Gross. You ever had a fish julep? I have not. Me I'm either. Sorry. Let's make them. Um, That'll be next week's episode. <laughs> no, it will not. We're going to do our research. Disagree. And we're going to make fish juleps. Disagree. Um, Hmm. so basically that's what happened. That's what happens when it rains fish, because apparently that's a thing. That sounds There are a lot of other weird rains that I'm going to get to eventually. I can't wait for the weird rains. But this is the fish rain episode. (laughs) And we, now we know that eels are fish. Yes, eels are fish. I can't believe I asked that question. Right, so that was the first story. I enjoyed that story. Yeah. Like a lot. Uh What, What year was this again? Um, for which story? The I mean, eels. Uh, 1892. Okay. I was going to say, they, they probably don't... <sighs> Excuse me. Um, but it also wasn't published until 1919, so a lot of mm. people are like, is that even really a thing? Was there actually... That doesn't sound real Fish now. rain, but, I mean, fish rain has been reported, like, in mm. modern days all over the world. Like, it's I've just a it. thing. I've heard of that. Um, like, there's, like I said, weird rain of all sorts of things. Like, I was reading one article about, like, Excuse how me. it was raining hermit crabs in some, like, I think it was Australia or something. Hermit like, crabs are so tiny. I know. What kind of rain? Like, hermit crab rain. <laughs> well, yeah. You just said it was hermit crab. <laughs> You literally just said herbit crab rain. But, like, of all of the things that could rain down on you, like, fish isn't the worst. Why well, couldn't could it be have worse. been kangaroo rain? Well, because... It would have been cute rain. That would have been adorable rain. Like, koala rain? Mm. Oh, my God. Anyway, so that's <laughs> enough about the rain. Are you ready for one of my personal favorite stories? Uh, yeah. Oh but God. is everybody else ready? I think they're ready, Mitch. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to tell you the dramatic and incredibly long story of are you ready for this <laughs> okay okay that's too much <laughs> okay, it's the bell witch the bell witch the bell witch apparently you don't know i don't know anything about i was the bell expecting witch. more of a reaction but apparently not you've never heard oh, of wait, the bell let's witch take it again go again okay hold on. go ahead the bell witch what 
I fucking guess. love the Bell Witch. The fucking Bell Witch. Oh, the Bell Witch. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Hold on. I got to clean up. Ooh, okay, no. Gross. Let's go. You need to cut that out. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's not coming out. No. Um, so, the Bell Witch is one of the most well-known hauntings in the United States. It's mm. in Tennessee. It's Ooh. amazing. Are you ready? Is it in Memphis, Tennessee? It is not. It's in Adams, Tennessee. We can't do it then. Um, Adams, Tennessee is right near the border near Kentucky. I've actually been there, so I know where it's at. Ooh. Uh, it's about two and a half hours away from here. So Fancy. if you ever want to visit, don't because it's kind of lame. Um, <laughs> but the Bell Witch, y'all. But the Bell Witch, the y'all. The Bell Witch. Um, seriously, though, like it's a, it's a tourist trap now. And like the people, like... Google the Bell Witch Cave just to read the reviews about how salty the people that own the place are. It's kind of funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, they're just mean. But at any rate, I have been. It was a little lame, but let's go with the story. Um, there have been movies about this. There have been, like... Like Hollywood movies? Like, I mean, low-budget Hollywood movies, but, okay. like, legit, like, Hollywood um, horror movies. Um, Who was I, in it? I don't remember, but, like, my grandparents definitely have the DVD, so if you want to watch it, go ahead. I'm good. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, so, (laughs) let's get to the story. In uh, the early 1800s, there was a guy named John Bell. He was from North Carolina, um, and he decided, you know, North Carolina's great and all, but Tennessee, that's where we're moving. (laughs) So, him and his wife up and moved to Robertson County, Tennessee. Like I said before, it's right near the border of Kentucky and Tennessee. So it's right on that state line at the top of the state. Um, okay. And they were settling near a community called Red River. Um, Red River became Adams, Tennessee. So that's, you know, modern day Adams, Tennessee is what we're talking about. I have no clue where that is. Once again, right near the border, right in the middle. Um, anyway, so um, Bell purchased uh, a bunch of land and uh, a large house for his family because they have a crap ton of children. So hmm. when they move down there, I think they've only got like three sons, but they end up eventually having like eight children. And can I please name the children for you because they're if, great names. If you must. All right. So their oldest son's name is Jesse Egbert Bell because Egbert, Egbert is the best name. <laughs> um, their second son is called uh, Drury Bell, D-R-E-W-R-Y Bell. Nice. Drury I met the uh, Muffin Man down there. <laughs> uh, funny. What a terrible joke. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, John Bell Jr., because why not? The third child is Jr.? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, but that's weird. John Bell Jr., um, then those were the three that they had in North Carolina. So then starting in um, when they moved to Tennessee, they start pumping out more kids. So then Gross. we get Esther Bell. And Zadok Bell, because Zadok is a real name. Zadok. Zadok. Um, then you get Elizabeth Bell, who will feature very prominently in this story. Her name is Betsy Bell, is what most people call her. Well, is Betsy short for Elizabeth? Mm-hmm. That's where Betsy comes from? Yeah. What? I know. Learn something new every day, right? Yeah, I learned eels were fish just a few minutes ago. <laughs> then Richard William Bell, and then Joel Egbert Bell, because you need two Egberts in the family. <laughs> There's another Egbert? Did the first one die, though? No. They I mean, it was all... the 1800s. Kids just kind of fell yeah, over. Yeah, no. He, like, legit, like, served in the Civil War and made it through, and he was fine. Jesse Egbert and Joel Egbert. It's too many Egberts, it's y'all. It's a lot of Egberts. But anyway, Most that's Egberts the I've ever heard of. Yay. <laughs> um, so they had all of these kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stop it. Um, so John Bell was a pretty respected dude in this area. Um, he was an elder of the Red River Baptist Church. Um, mm. so they were pretty prominent. They had a nice, like, two story little cabin, real cute. Um, there's pictures online of artist renderings. Now, they have a cabin that they have... Re- like, the original cabin does not still survive. Um, but they've built a replica, and the replica looks absolutely nothing like what the artist renderings of the original cabin look like. So doesn't sound like much of a replica, then. I mean, yeah. And, like, they have one piece of the re- remaining structure, and it's like a rock. And they charge you, like, a crap ton of money to view this, like... To look at a rock? Basically. That's like, you know what they do with, like, Plymouth Rock rock. now? It's, like, the same thing. Plymouth Rock is, like, a... Like, a basketball-sized rock now. It's probably a little bit bigger than that. 
But it used to be huge, right? And yeah. then it eroded away, and now it's just like guarded on all sides, and the closest you can get is like 50 feet from it. That's weird. And it's like a little basketball type well, thing. No, you can actually touch this rock, but it's just a chimney stone, and they they charge you like a crap ton of money. It's dumb. Don't go there. We should go. No, they're so mean there. I've read the <laughs> They're <Google>. so <laughs> mean. <laughs> they're mean anyway. to you. But huh? they have the tourist attraction? Yeah. Is There's, it like those restaurants where they curse at you? Like, they want no, you to come, and it's part no, of the experience. No, no, They're just salty old southern folk that want to take your money, but don't actually want to do it. Like, it's it's a lot. The Read worst. Read the Google reviews. They're kind of funny. Anyway. <laughs> all right. So, um, they're a prominent family. They have all these children. Um, and then, sort of the shit hits the fan all at once. Um, so, one day... Well. In 1817, John Bell was expecting his fields. I think he was growing corn or something like that. Inspecting? Inspecting. I thought I heard expecting. I apologize. Inspecting. He was inspecting his cornfields, and he encountered this really freaking weird-looking animal in the middle of his corn row. What was that strange animal shot in the dark? Son of a bitch. Was it A, a large hare with antlers? (laughs) Was it B, a cat with a snake for a tail? Or C, a dog with the head of a rabbit. A snake tail cat? A snake tail cat. Dog with the head of a rabbit. Or... That just sounds like a big rabbit. <laughs> I think he just saw a big rabbit and went, that's dog rabbit. It's like, it's like when we, uh, where did we learn that the word cat is like, uh, like Greek or something for just the word dog? Like, it's all the same. I've never heard of that. I think you're making shit No, that's, I'm not making that up. That's a real thing. <laughs> right. I just don't know where I heard it from. Good to know. Um, was it I'm a Snapple say, lid? Because you can't trust Snapple lids. It was not a Snapple lid. <laughs> I'm almost positive. I haven't had Snapple since I was like four. Yes, we have the Snapple apples. They're my favorite. Oh, yeah. Never mind. I've had Snapple a lot. <laughs> I was just like, the best research podcast you've ever listened to. <laughs> we are so talented, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to go with the antler rabbit. You are wrong. Mm. Take a shot. Are you going to tell me first, or do I have to shoot this first? It was a dog with the head of a rabbit. That's just a big rabbit. <laughs> this is or horseshit. a dog with big ears. Oh, oh. Like Samus. So it had, like, large floppy ears. Well, I mean, it... Well, Samus's ears stand up, though. Yeah, but so do bunny ears. Some, like, hairs. No, very what? few of them do. They're all floppy. Look at the John Emerald bottle. There is a bunny rabbit with its yeah. ears standing oh, shit, up on the right. front of it. Why did I not... You're right. That's there a hair. you go. That's a hair. That's you're right. a hair. Yeah. You're right. That's. I mean, it's also a drawing. So let's not take. Let's take that with a grain of salt. Whatever. Or a grain of spices and pecans and shit. That's just. No, that's not gonna work. Take a shot. All right. Here we go. Here's my shot in the dark. Ugh. He did it, y'all. Woo. We cannot keep doing shots. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad though. No, but it's got a lot of spices. In it. it is. It's kicking for sure, like a bunny oh, rabbit. Oh, oh, this is not a shooting rum. <laughs> this is a sipping rum Indeed. in a Coca Cola classic. Indeed. We have to go to work tomorrow. We do. Oh, all right. All right. So he Continue. was so freaked out by the appearance of this animal. He was just like, "Whoa, a dog body, rabbit head." So he shot at the thing several times, um, because, like you do. There we go. How far away was he from it? I mean... Again, he thought it was a dog with a rabbit head. It's probably just a giant fucking rabbit. Or a dog with a big ears. And he's so... Or, a, or yeah, like a wolf. Or like a coyote or something. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's coyotes everywhere down here. So he saw Maybe it from a distance. Maybe he just didn't know what a coyote looked like. Yeah, and he shot at it oh. from a distance. You know, Indeed. that's just stupid. So after... I hate this guy. He shot at it, the animal vanished, didn't see it, and he was like, eh, well, dog rabbits, what are you going to do? Yeah. Shrugged his shoulders. <laughs> he eh. it. Mercy. So he went home, and he forgot about it. But later that evening, stuff started happening. Uh-oh. He started hear, or the entire family started hearing beating sounds on the outside of the walls of their log cabin. So they started Sounds like wind. Thunka, 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 thunkas. And Sounds like he didn't put the shingles scratchy, on. Screechy, scratchy, scratchy. And they hear, like, whistling noises and beating, and it just sounds like like a bear is out there just wailing on the outside a of the A bear? House. I don't know. <laughs> Did the... <laughs> a bear? No, it's the dog 
<laughs> with the rabbit head that also Stupid. walks on two feet yeah. and is capable of finding a spatula outside <laughs> and beating on the walls <laughs> and can whistle. This is very specific. Oh, I, I hate this story. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the worst. Um, yeah, so they were like, okay, that's, that's weird. Um, but they just sort of like forgot about it, I guess. But the mysterious sounds kept happening. So, and they kept increasing in frequency so every night it started happening um nice um (laughs) so when this started happening they would hear it and so john bell and his sons would sort of like hurry outside to try to figure out like oh it was hobo jim or something just being on the outside now is hobo jim a real person (laughs) no is this a character no i actually just like the the mountain lady from i don't know if that was episode two that was improv i'm sorry old um (laughs) (laughs) well it was good i want to know who hobo jim is (laughs) so hobo jim uh they they tried to catch him but it never did because he wasn't there um So they were like, oh, crap, there's nobody out there. And so they were really frightened and freaked out about it. Um, So everything started escalating even more. The kids started waking up freaked out, complaining that they felt like rats were gnawing at their bedpost. They felt like they were being pricked with pins and needles. Their bed covers were being pulled over them and their pillows were tossed everywhere. And it just like there was like some... Reports of, like, levitation and some of the kids. Like it this was, was a farm, right? Yes. Okay, the first two are very easily explained. By they actual live, rats yes, in there. rats and bed bugs. They have a farm, but the second two uh, are, you know, the pillows and bed sheets Yeah, and like, the covers being pulled that. away, and, like, they couldn't... They tried to, like, get covered down and, mm-hmm. like, snuggle up, and nope, that entity just, like, ripped their covers off and threw their pillows around. No sleep for y'all. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> so, I mean, that sounds terrible, actually. Um, and then they started hearing whispering voices and sounds that were a little too faint to hear. You couldn't understand quite what they were saying. Hmm. Um, but then they started being able to actually understand what this person was saying. Um, and so it escalated even further to where they could actually hear the sound of it sounded like an old woman um and she was singing hymns and reciting scriptures Mm -mm. and like just this random ass voice just singing and cackling and being weird Mm -mm. um and it especially liked to mess with uh the youngest daughter betsy um I forgot about that. It would pull her hair all the time. It would slap her. She would feel like there were pins being stuck in her. Um, It would leave, like, handprints on her face. Um, Like, just awful. That's creepy. Um, Yeah. That sounds like Betsy's getting abused, and they're blaming it on a ghost. I know, right? Yeah. Um, But anyway... At this point, the Bells were like, Oh, we should probably not talk about the creepy poltergeist that's living in our house. Like... Not Probably talk about don't it. Want it. Yeah, they don't want anybody else to know that this weird shit's going down at their house. Just um, ign- oh, you mean to other people? Yeah, to other. I people. thought you meant to like. Oh, not at to all. each other. No, 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 like ignore it. No, like to like outside t- townsfolk because like that makes this sense. guy's like an elder at the Baptist church down the street. Like he doesn't. And his want daughter's this apparently out. possessed. <laughs> exactly. And we don't. We don't. Want we don't talk about that. That the devil resides in the farmhouse. Exactly. Um, but eventually it got so bad that he decided to confide in his closest friend and neighbor his name was james johnston um so the johnstons were like okay that's weird but they decided to go ahead and spend a night at the house um with the bell family um and they heard everything just like them their bed covers were pulled off they got slapped repeatedly um to the point where johnston uh just jumped up and said you know in the name of the lord you know (laughs) what are you who are you what do you want and then after that the thing was just like i'll stop messing with them Um, that's all it fucking took why didn't they try that apparently you yell back at the apparition Uh, apparently but i mean it it didn't stay quiet because the entity's voice kept getting crazier and crazier and crazier and anyway it carried on conversations with the family um it it even like quoted word for word like the sermon two different sermons of 
like, okay, so there was a lot of churches in the area, I'm sure, just like there are today. Um, so there was a church across from a church, like 13 miles apart, and this entity quoted the sermon word for word of the church that happened in one, and at the same time, on the same Sunday, the the sermon that was going on 13 miles away. So, like, I don't, mm. just, like, bilocating poltergeist? I don't know. Sounds like weird. Sounds like an omnipresent poltergeist something like that it was a little freaking weird gotta say um not a fan so another story that they like to tell um that cannot be substantiated which a lot of this is a bit iffy um i don't think any of those can be substantiated uh, especially the fucking rabbit dog all right you know that i'm right about the (laughs) rabbit dog oh and i should have mentioned that the reason they call it the bell witch is because um, so, apparently it's also named, known, the, mm, the entity's name is also <laughs> Kate. No, it's not. It is. Its name is Kate. Um, I thought it was Betsy. Because, no, Betsy's the daughter. Oh. Yeah. Where Kate is what they call it because apparently, and, and this story is different in a couple of different locations of who you ask and where it's historically written down at first, but, um... Basically, Ugh. apparently John Bell got in a dispute with a neighboring lady, an old widow lady named Kate Batts, um, over anything ranging from property to to slaves. I mean, there's a lot of weird, like, nobody knows exactly. But apparently they were mad at each other for some reason. And that's just, apparently when shit starts happening, you just blame the old lady nearby. Yeah. Um, because, like you do. Well, um, did... And did, the spirit, they called, uh, for some reason sorry. they were like, oh, that's old Kate Bat's witch. Um, <laughs> well, did she die? I, well, they mention her, and then, like, they never say anything else about her. So, so he I had a spat. she's dead. They had a yeah. spat. And then all of a sudden, this thing starts happening. And the thing starts happening. So they call her Kate. um, And then the spirit apparently responds positively to that name. So they assume that it's just Kate. Um, How does a spirit respond positively? Well, like, they were having conversations with the voice. So I assume it was like, yeah, I'm Kate. Thanks. You figured it out. Bingo prize (laughs) for you. (laughs) The prize is I will not (laughs) rattle your shutters this week. (laughs) You know JK. what? Forget rattle, that. Rattle, rattle, tonight. Rattle. I won't do it tonight. <sighs> we'll anyway. see what tomorrow brings. So, she's also called Kate, in case you were wondering. I wasn't, but now I know. It's good to know. Is um, Steve okay over there? Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> All right. So, this is the, there's a story that's, you know, obviously unsubstantiated. Like I said before, there's, I mean, there's, there is historical records of some of this stuff, but this part is basically pure fiction but i'm gonna tell it because that's my favorite part um good so john bell jr drury bell and jesse bell the oldest sons um had all fought with general jackson so andrew jackson at the battle of new orleans um so Hmm. in 1819 jackson decided to visit the farm to see like because at this point in time Word had gotten out about this crazy ghosty thing that was Mm -hmm. living at their house. So Jackson's entourage um, just rolls up with their wagons. Um, Several men, some groomed horses, real real nice fancy stuff. Groomed? They were groomed? Well groomed. Well groomed? Well groomed. My goodness. Only the best horses for Andrew Jackson. (laughs) Only the best, sir. Uh, And so as they were approaching the Bell property, the wagon suddenly stopped. Just completely like, cheek, 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 heh, you know? Like, did it just they not stopped. have horses? They attached? did, but the horses couldn't pull it. It just became supernaturally uh, unable to be pulled. I just like, figured the horses stopped. No, the horses did. Like, they were trying to coax the horses to pull the wagon. The horses could not pull it. Hmm. Um, and so Jackson cries out, By the eternal boys, that must be the bell witch. Jesus, that was so loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> By the eternal, boys. Well, I mean, it had an exclamation point after it, so I had to. I mean, you have to scream it. It's like that uh, that Jennifer Lawrence movie, The Mother. What? It's got an exclamation point. (laughs) That That has uh, nothing to do with anything we were talking about. Yeah. So after he made this really incredibly loud declaration, I apologize, um, (laughs) 
a disembodied female voice, so basically the Bell Witch, um, told Jackson that they could proceed, but uh, she'd be seeing him again later that evening. What does that mean, Kate? <laughs> Sassy Kate. See your tits, again. Kate. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Um, so they were able, the wagon immediately was able to proceed again. So it like started rolling again. Um, so they made it up the lane to the Jackson, or not the Jacksons, the Bell's home. Yeah. Um, so they got out and got all their stuff and they had, um, you know, conversations about what was going on and all of that stuff. And everybody was just waiting to see if the ghost was going to do anything. So he had some really, can I say douchey? Yes. Douchey guys with him. You were allowed to were, say douchey. And they were all like trying to like outbrave each other. And one of them was like, I'm a witch tamer. I know what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was actually a position in my fraternity. Yeah. <laughs> witch tamer. <laughs> He's like, I'm a witch tamer. Um, It'll be fine. Um, and he actually had a pistol with silver bullets in it because apparently silver is what kills all the evil things. Um, all right. Vampires, he's, werewolves. He, yeah, he's, con- he's confusing some things here. <laughs> I don't think witches care about silver. No. Like, I think they like silver. I don't like know. Like jewelry and everything. Well, but, like, silver's a thing in folklore. Like, I mean, if it's bad, you should yeah. probably shoot it with silver or stab it with silver or something. I get it, but yeah. I don't think he's right. But anyway, he Whoever this douche was. Like, and... Who Douche fucking canoe. carries a, a pistol with silver bullets? Like, who just has silver bullets? Did, was it silver bullets, or did he have some kind of... Was the pistol silver? Uh-uh. Maybe? It says silver bullets. He he was carrying silver... He was pulling out a pistol uh, with silver bullets. Because, silver. Yeah. I can't say the word silver. Yeah. Um. So, he was all like, they're not... Nothing's gonna happen, because I've got these silver bullets. Um... So immediately the guy like began begins jerking and having these seizures, complaining that he was mm-hmm. being stuck with pins and being beaten, um, and it just hurts. And like you could physically see the man being kicked. You know what I mean? Um, no, no, I don't know what you well, mean. Well, like just imagine someone being kicked and being able to see it, but then like the foot's not there. Like, like he he's gets being physically he like gets momentary assaulted. indentions into his side. Yeah, and, and then like and like he's like being lifted and, and he gets kicked out the door. Sounds like special effects. Yeah, this sounds like movie magic. Yeah, um, but so he gets kicked out the front door, and so the entity speaks up. Kate's like, "Look, there's another dick in your party." He, they said fraud, but you know, there's another jerk in this Kate, part, Kate party. Kate's dick. Kate didn't say Kate. Kate, you are a Kate freak. Kate said frog. Kate, let's frog. talk. Um, so Kate, <laughs> shut up. Um, so <clears throat> Kate, listen. We we can talk later on. Mm, all right. She's, not not me and her. I'm talking like as one of the yeah. one of the douches in the party. Uh huh. Got real into it. Yeah. Well. Jackson was like, oh, there's another dumbass in my party? Uh, Do tell. So they decided to wait around and see if uh, that person got outed, just like the the douche canoe with the silver bullets. Interesting. Um, So the guys are, like, really freaked out and terrified, and they're like, okay, Jackson, we want to go. But Jackson was like, no, no, I want to know who the other fraud in our party is. Um, But eventually the men decided, you know, they went to sleep, they were begging him to leave. They're like, no. Um, but nobody really knows what happened or uh, why they ended up not staying all the way through the night. Um, because Jackson and his entourage were spotted nearby on their way to Nashville the next morning and were clearly not um, still at the Bell Farm. So they made a hasty retreat um, mm-hmm. after that happened. But. Well... Um, are we sure they were even there? You said it was, of course, not backed up at all. But uh, no, uh, they definitely weren't there. It, like they Jackson would ever. There? Oh, definitely. Like Come Andrew Jackson would ever have stopped at a little farm town in the middle of nowhere. He might be super into ghost stories. You don't know a damn thing about Andrew Jackson. I actually do. He was Jackson. a terrible person and an awful president. But at any rate, well, that's. That's an opinion. No, no. It's pretty historically <laughs> proven that he was a dick. That's, but that's an opinion. Moving on. Um, I don't want to move on. <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay. So, you know, the the daughter Betsy that has had all the problems with Kate, mm-hmm. um, 
becomes interested in this local young gentleman. His name oh. is Joshua Gardner. Um, His name was Andrew Jackson. No. <laughs> His name was Joshua Gardner. Um, and he lived not too far away from them. Um, and they decided that, you know what? It's time to get married. So with the blessing of both of their parents, um, they decided that they were going to get married. And everybody was like real excited. Like, oh yeah. I'm excited. Um, I love a wedding. But yeah, the entity was pissed off. Kate did not like Joshua at all. Like, just not Kate happening. sounds jealous. Kate was so mad that, like, everything just increased in intensity. They couldn't go anywhere without getting, like, messed with by this spirit. Um, they could go to the river, the field. There was a cave, and they actually sell tickets to view the cave. And the cave has absolutely nothing to do with the rest of this, but... there, There's one of my questions yeah. right there. So you said the river and the cave and... And everything like that. Is this all on this property? Yeah, but the property is like 300 acres. It's a lot of room, I'm sure. Yeah. Did they try moving away? No. Right. So the spirit isn't following Betsy. It's just on the land. Apparently. Yeah. That sounds like Betsy's fault. And or Joshua's fault. Are you victim blaming this poor girl that just wants to get married? Look, you can you can say victim blaming, but how are you going to prosecute a ghost? You just move away. Well, just get away actually, from it. we're going to get to that. But at any rate. Oh, shit. Ah, yeah. What? <laughs> I will remind everyone that I know nothing about these stories. <laughs> this is the best researched podcast you have ever listened to. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they decided to get married, but Kate was not having it. She was pissed off, was not cool with it. All right, so this is like a side story to it that I really don't think has a lot to do with it but like it's always included in the stories about this so i'm gonna say it anyway um but just for the record i don't think it really matters but i think it's creepy so i'm gonna say it um so the school teacher in town's name was richard powell um and he had been interested in betsy for a long time like while she was in his class. Had That's fucking creepy. Yeah. Had expressed interest in marrying her when she got older. Did you say Richard Powell? Richard Powell. Now I know who to look out for. Yeah. And he was 11 years older than Betsy. Um, and it's rumored that he was a student of the occult. He was a witch himself, apparently. Um, and it wasn't proved, Excuse but me. it was rumored around everywhere. Um, so some people are like, oh, it was definitely Richard that's casting all these witches and stuff because, um, you know. Because he was scorned. Because he was, yeah, because he was pissed off that Betsy wanted Joshua. Because he was in the friend zone. Yeah. Or the teacher um, zone. So he apparently was also secretly married to someone in Nashville at the time, too. How can you be secretly married? I don't know. That's just what the article said. Um, <laughs> the best researched <laughs> podcast you have ever heard. Um, he was secretly married to a lady named Esther Scott during the time that he spent teaching at Red River. He was married um, to an old lady. That's why it was a secret. Yeah. Um, and according to some of the accounts, though, Powell was just like, that's fine. I mean, I'm sad that Betsy doesn't want to marry me, but, like, I'm wishing him well. So, like, it's, uh, by all accounts, this guy was perfectly normal and fine. Just people are trying to find a reason to bring something up about the For witch. For the ghost. Yeah. So, a I witch. Mean, I'm sorry. Maybe old Richard Powell was haunting them, but probably not. Um... So wait, was Richard Powell dead? No. But he was a he had the power to send the things is what people were saying because well, he was part of the occult. Yeah, he was an occult practitioner. So right. maybe he had allegedly. A, allegedly. Allegedly, do not sue us. <laughs> do not sue us, Richard Powell. Um, pretty sure he's dead. But anyway, he's got relatives. Descendants. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, <laughs> no relatives. His brother. <laughs> Don't sue us. Gerald Powell. <laughs> oh, anyway, but so it got so bad for Joshua and Betsy. Like they got like poked and prodded, and the Kate would not leave him alone. So um, on Easter of eighteen twenty one, Betsy was like, "Okay, look, 
I can't do this anymore. And they broke off their engagement. So it left Betsy alone after that. that Apparently she was thrilled that Etsy, uh, Etsy, Etsy, <laughs> that the Etsy store opened up. <laughs> thrilled that Betsy decided to end the engagement. So it was done with Betsy at that point. But it still really hated John Bell for whatever reason. And it vowed um, to kill him because... Like in the conversation, yeah. it said, I'm going to yeah, kill you, like, John Bell. I hate you, John Bell. I'm going to kill you. Okay, um, that does sound like he did something to somebody. To piss someone off, right? Yeah. Um. That so, at this point, John Bell had been experiencing some episodes of, like, twitching in his face. And um, he was having some swelling problems. He couldn't swallow very well. Um, and it kept getting worse with time. So to me, that sounds like maybe like ALS or something. You know what I mean? Like yeah. an actual, like he had some kind of neurological disorder. But they're blaming mm-hmm. it on the witch. So I'm going to say witch. He had an um, actual problem. He did, obviously. That was never diagnosed. Yeah. Because it was the 1800s and doctors were not an actual thing. Uh, well, yeah. Basically. Um, So, by the fall of 1820, um, his health was so bad that he was stuck in the house all the time. He was confined to his house. Um, But Kate was not, you know, just lying around letting him be peacefully sick in his bed. Um, The entity decided that uh, he would... Anytime he tried to put his shoes on, it would rip his shoes off. (laughs) And anytime he tried to start walking... It's a really funny haunting. (laughs) Anytime he tried to start walking, they would slap his face. Um, He experienced a lot of seizures and stuff like that. He would slap his face when he would walk? uh, Yeah. Kate's voice could be heard all over the farm just cursing and calling him Old Jack Bell. um, Because that's how she referred to him was Old Jack Bell. Um, Huh. And just, like, kept vowing to kill him. Um, So, John Bell died on December the 20th of 1820. um, After he slipped into a coma the day before. Um, Immediately after he died, the family found a little (laughs) bottle that they, that no one recognized. No one knew what it was. Nobody had seen it in the house before. Nobody knew what this little bottle was. Um, you should so have they... multiple shots in the dark for every story, because now I can guess what's in the bottle. Because <laughs> I'm going to guess, guess, hold on, hold on, <laughs> i got to retake that. Because I'm going to guess, with no T on the end, that it was rum, that it, it was John Emerald rum. It was not, sir. Oh. Um they didn't, they smelled, it was sort of a dark, nasty smelling liquid that was still in the, the bottle. Sounds like um, rum. So instead of, um, like, just letting it go, they decided, John Bell Jr. was like, look, we're going to give this to the cat. And the cat the died cat. immediately. <laughs> the cat. <laughs> we're going to give this to the cat. And the cat died instantly. <laughs> Wait, was that like a was that a test though? Yeah, Were it was they a doing test to see te- was okay. is this poison that so he that, drank? That kind of makes sense though. Yeah, that but like don't fucking sense. give it to the cat. What else are they gonna give it to? Wait, no, no, they give it to the rabbit dog. <laughs> they give it. They find the rabbit dog and they give it to that thing. But like, how then much of Then they kill the rabbit dog. How much of a terrible person? Like, oh, this looks like poison, cat. Like that's awful. I mean, Leah, if we find something in this house that's a, that's a bottled liquid, I don't know what it is. I'm gonna see what Steve thinks about it first. If you feed Mister Clean to the cat, I'm gonna be so mad. Why would it be Mister Clean? <laughs> Who said anything about Mister Clean? What else is it gonna be? It could be anything. This uh, house is a hundred years old. You're right. But my point is, Steve is has very discerning tastes, uh-huh. so he would probably reject poison if I would. You know, if I were to guess. Well, apparently this cat did not have a discerning palate because he <laughs> died immediately after being no. force-fed this mysterious liquid from this bottle that killed their dad, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so the entity at this point is like, huzzah, I I gave old Jack I a dose of poison um, last night and it killed him. And John Jr. was like, oh shit. And he like threw the bottle into the fireplace like you do um and apparently it burst into a bright flame that, and, and bluish yeah. flame shot up the chimney what kind of flame bluish, bluish. 
That just means that it was a certain chemical that burns hotter. Yeah, That's yeah. all that it meant. Yeah. So it was probably like turpentine or something. <laughs> turpentine will kill a cat. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> because I don't know that. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure turpentine would kill a cat. I'm sure. Um, Does turpentine burn? Is that flammable? Yes, it's very flammable. Um, and I'm right. Yes. And eels are um, fish. So they held John's funeral um, later that week. Um, it's one of the biggest funerals. They Everybody came out, friends, family, everybody. Um, and as people started showing up at the graveyard, Kate started singing loud drinking songs about a bottle of brandy. Um, this is upsetting. Yeah, she just starts just a rollicking good tune. Um, and it said that the singing didn't stop until everybody had left the graveyard. She was just so freaking thrilled that this dude's dead. Um, okay. So, um, in 1821, um, the entity visited John Bell's widow. So her name was Lucy. I don't know that I've ever said that. You before. have not told me who okay. John Bell's wife was. Well, her name was Lucy. Lucy gave birth to eight children. Eight children. I'm so sorry, yeah. Lucy. Um, so the entity said that it was going to leave, but it would return for a visit in seven years. So the entity did return in 1828, just like they promised. Um, mm-hmm. And most of it was, it was just poking and prodding and being a total annoyance to John Bell Jr. Um, the third child. The third child, yeah. Right. Um, and it just started talking and they had lots of conversations and... Um, that doesn't sound like it was poking and prodding then. But I'm, I'm, Sounds just, like they were friends. Um, they were, apparently it made some... Um, some predictions about the civil war and stuff like that i don't know the best researched podcast <laughs> you have ever heard Ooh. are we um, getting those predictions it, no <laughs> <laughs> apparently they, they the were just best. <laughs> we all know what happened in the civil war so apparently that's what she said no i knew what but happened. i want i, I yeah. knew yeah I know, um, but I want to know what her predictions well, were. Well, I don't know, so I'm sorry. I can't tell you. Y'all um, do that research yourself. <laughs> um, but the entity was like, okay, that's cool. We've had enough. So after three weeks, um, they're like, John Bell Jr., I'm going to visit your most direct descendant in 107 years this time. So that that's would have been like 1935. And the closest living relative of John Bell at that point in time was this doctor from Nashville, and his name was Dr. Charles Bailey Bell. Mm. Um, And Dr. Bell wrote a book about the Bell Witch um, that was published in 1934. Um, How far away was he related to John Bell Jr.? Like, what was the relation? You know, you should stop asking questions. The best research podcast (laughs) <laughs> you are so rude. Um, That's not rude. rude. I wanted. I want. I'm sorry. Um, Continue. But he never really said anything about uh, being haunted by that spirit at all. So maybe it didn't come to him. Who knows? Um, but basically, um, that's what happened. Um, and apparently, you can still feel unexplainable manifestations near the old bell farm today um but like i said if you want to go it's a bit of a tourist trap it's expensive and there are surly southerners that really just want to take your money and don't actually want to be nice are they bell descendants no they're just people that bought the farm Mm -hmm. and said yeah we're gonna try to make money off this Mm -hmm. they probably made Mm -hmm. up the whole fucking story but the big thing about this particular um haunting is this is what I was always told about the Bell thing was on his death certificate. The the official ruling of the coroner, I guess. Anyway, mm-hmm. his death certificate, whatever. It was ruled that he it was death by a witch, basically. So it's the only officially paranormally killed person in the United States. His death certificate says death by witch. Well, I mean, I've never seen it, but I mean, that's what it's claimed, (laughs) is that he's the only person that it's ever been officially ruled as he was killed by a paranormal something or another. Ghost, I guess. 
for want of a better word. She sounds more like a poltergeist to me. Um, is there a difference? What's the difference? Very, okay, so like a ghost is generally considered to be, you know, residual energy or presence of a dead person. Poltergeists get more into like they can pick shit up, they can throw it at you. They're the more like active, like <sighs> trickstery kind of thing. Like you've read Harry Potter, like Peeves, he's a poltergeist. <laughs> you've read it? <laughs> yes, I've read Harry Potter. It. So what is Peeves Nicholas? Is a, or not Nicholas? What's the uh, Sir Nicholas is a ghost? Yeah. So, like, because he doesn't touch anything. No, he doesn't touch anything. He doesn't. He's not mischievous. Like poltergeists are just there to be dicks. Like they're they're mean. And another thing is, a lot of people are like, well, maybe it is not a witch per se or a ghost. Maybe it is a poltergeist because, in like poltergeist lore, um, a lot of people think that they attach to young adolescent girls that are going through puberty because they're apparently just so dramatic and like hormone ridden that they just pop like they draw that kind of energy to themselves um so most of the poltergeist that is upsetting what you just said most of the poltergeist stories that you will read involve a young teenage girl um and so and it being attached specifically to betsy is something that people are like oh 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 poltergeist that is is very upsetting Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh everyone listen to our new podcast (laughs) harry potter ghost or poltergeist (laughs) we will go through all the house ghosts and we will decide which ones are ghosts and which ones are harmful poltergeists. Well, I'm pretty sure JK already did that for us because she named one literally Peeves the Poltergeist and the rest of them are just called ghosts. So it's going to be a short podcast, y'all. You know what? Don't check it out. We're going to have one episode and it's not even worth listening to. Sorry. Don't do it. We just told you all of it right uh, here. Yeah. Just So... You that's know what? that's the story of the Don't bewitch. There are tons of books and movies, and just read about it. It's super interesting. I love that story because I just it's you just like that story. Yeah, it's pretty great. Well, I liked it just fine. It wasn't one of my favorites. Rude. Kind of pissed me off, actually. Rude. I just hated that. What's her fucking name? Kate Bats. Kate Bats. I just don't like her. But she just. I just want to know her. if she died. I just want to know if Kate was actually haunting these people. Uh, who knows? Well, she likes to be called Kate, the the entity, the poltergeist. Maybe she just likes the name, but it's That's assumed that it was Kate. Maybe she's just Katie, the ghost. Poltergeist. 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 Mm. That's why you should listen to our other. <laughs> no, we're not going to go through that. <laughs> we're not doing that again. Oh. So did you have any questions about it, or are you just like, no, you're done with it? No, I'm just done with that story. Ah, that was, all right. Like, I wrote down so much stuff that I just don't want to talk about. I'm sorry, but because I love that. It, I mean, look, don't get me wrong, good story, but if I can't go visit it without being yelled at, I don't want to, I just don't even want to hear about it. Sorry. Those people sound like assholes. I, I don't call them assholes. I don't know yeah, that. Yeah, don't sue us. <laughs> don't know you people. We love y'all, I promise. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. I don't know them. I don't know them at all. Nope. Not one bit. Mm-hmm. I don't care to. Nope. Anyway. All right. all right, y'all, it's time to toast. Everybody get your drinks in the air. If you don't have a drink, raise up your imaginary goblet, because tonight we're toasting um, the eel rain from Kohlberg and... <laughs> The eel rain. <laughs> Just eel rain. The eel rain and the bell witch. <clears throat> when in Alabama, don't get stuck out in the rain. We only get our fish delivered here by hurricane. If you don't seek Kate's approval before you're getting hitched, the ghost will fall upon you and you're gonna wind up witched. Nice Drink. toast. Everybody take a sip. Oh, yeah, that was quite nice. Mm. That was a good poem. Thank you. Thank you for that poem. And I'm sure Kate thanks you for that poem. Thanks, Kate. Hopefully she doesn't come over here and haunt us. Seriously, Kate, stay in Tennessee. Yeah, just stay up there with those mean people (laughs) that we don't know. 
Thank y'all so much for listening to the Southern Spirits podcast. Um, please subscribe, uh, rate, and review our podcast on iTunes. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest at Southern Spirits Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at S Spirits Podcast. And if you've got suggestions for a future show topic or have a personal story you want to share with us, or if you just know about a really great alcohol we need to check out, email us at Southern Spirits Podcast at gmail.com. We'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all.